Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS and small bytes. Today we will be covering the datametric mapping technique with population mapping and estimations. In this video, we'll cover what datametric mapping is and use a real world example at using this mapping technique. Then finally, we'll compare the results we obtain from datametric mapping to the results of a more traditional method. Dasymmetric mapping is a mapping technique that incorporates other related data about the distribution patterns of an observation, such as population count. These count estimates are usually provided with an administrative boundary such as census tracts or block groups. Incorporating other information about the spatial distribution of such an observation will allow for more accurate representation and estimation and analyses using these values. For this scenario, I'm working in Harris County, Texas and I have mapped grocery stores in block groups. I have identified a set of block groups that are considered low income and low access to grocery stores based on a set of criteria that include block groups have a poverty rate of 20% or more, or a household median income of 80% or below that of the median income for the whole county, and 20% of the household in the block group are reported to not have a vehicle. These block groups that are denoted low income and low access are shown in brown on my map. I'd like to determine as accurately as possible the total number of people within these groups that live further away than a walking distance of a half a mile. I have already calculated the service area of these grocery stores along the street network using Network Analyst, and these areas are represented as orange polygons on my map. Since the population counts are aggregated to the boundary that they were reported for, by block group in this case, a more traditional method would have me assume that the population is evenly distributed within the entire area of a block group. With the help of other data and datametric mapping technique, I can better define the actual distribution of the population. In this scenario, I'll use residential building footprints to define how the population of these block groups are distributed. Here we can see an example of much of the block group inside the half mile boundary does not include any residential buildings. But here is another area where there is a large number of residential buildings within the area, with a significant amount of the block group not including residential buildings at all. To use the residential buildings as a means to represent the population distribution, I'll need to group those buildings with the respective block groups that they are within. This is done in two steps. The first step is we'll intersect those buildings with the block groups that they are in, and then we'll dissolve on the block groups GOID. I have already grouped my residential buildings by block groups as you can see here, and I'll determine the proportion of the population that are outside the half mile walking distance of grocery stores by determining the proportion of residential buildings that are outside this distance. This of course does assume the population is evenly distributed within the residential buildings, but we are taking into account where the populations do in fact reside. To calculate the proportion of the residential buildings, we'll first calculate the total area. For this scenario, we'll calculate the area in acres. The next step, we'll remove all residential buildings that are within the half mile boundary leaving only the portion of the residential buildings outside the half mile. We'll do this by running the dissolved feature through the erase tool. The result of the erase tool provides the residential buildings outside the half mile boundary while removing those buildings within the boundary. I'll next calculate the area of these residential buildings to find the proportion of those outside the half mile walking distance to all of the residential buildings in each block group. I can then use this proportion to calculate the population using a formula such as this one. Now that I have the population count per block group, I can use the statistics function to quickly get a total count estimate of all populations that are outside the half mile walking distance of the grocery store that are within these low income, low access block groups. When we compare the results of the Dayson metric mapping to that of the more common method of assuming population is evenly distributed within the entire block group, we can see that it is likely that the traditional method overestimates, in this case, the total population. By taking residential buildings into consideration of the actual population distribution, 
we can be that much confident of our population estimation. To recap, we introduced the data metric mapping technique and walked through a real-world application in estimating population distribution. We then compared those results to that of a more traditional method that is commonly used. I think this is a great stopping point. This has been Tesselbytes, where we serve you GIS in small bites. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.